The last set of cryptographic hashing tools that we will have a look at in Kali Linux is the Hashdeep Tools collection. The Hashdeep Tools are created specifically for use in digital forensics and are known to and used by the digital forensics community. There is an individual Hashdeep tool for each of the MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, Tiger, and Whirlpool hashing algorithms. I don't talk about Tiger and Whirlpool in this course, but should you need an alternative to MD and SHA for hashing, those two hashing algorithms you should try. The Hashdeep tool itself supports all of the hashing algorithms of the other tools and also adds the feature of an auditing mode for comparing hash sets to files in a directory or directory tree. Auditing mode reports if any files in the hash set have changed and how they have changed. Auditing also works with single or block file hashing. All of the Hashdeep tools support features such as block hashing, matching files using hash sets, and recursively searching directory trees for files to hash. Fine control over the size and types of files to hash are also provided. All of the Hashdeep tools share the same command line options and features, so when you learn one tool, you pretty much know them all. The version of the Hashdeep tools included with Kali Linux 1.1.0 is quite old, has many known bugs, and is not updated using the apt-git command. If you want to use the Hashdeep tools for serious digital forensic work, you need to update to the latest version, which is hosted in a repository on GitHub. Here's how you do that. The first thing we need to do is check the version of the installed Hashdeep utility using the capital V flag. We see here that Hashdeep 4.2 is an old version. To update to the latest version, we need to download the Hashdeep source code repository from GitHub and build and install it using a few easy commands. Before we begin, remember to use the sudo command if you will be running these commands from a non-root privileged account. Oh, you need an internet connection to do this too. The first thing you will need to do is install the autoconfigure and automake utilities. These utilities are needed to build the Hashdeep tools. You install them using apt-get. Next, change to the user local source subdirectory. Now we download the Hashdeep source code. The repository source code will be automatically stored in a subdirectory named user local source Hashdeep. Next, we will build and install all of the Hashdeep executables. The make install command places the six deep tool binary files in user local bin. The hash deep files distributed with Kali are in user bin, which comes after user local bin in your path. This is important so the newer hash deep files you build will be found and run before the older 4.2 files. You can check this is happening with the hash deep version command. If you still see version 4.2, check that user local bin precedes user bin in your path. Use this command to see your path. Either move user local bin before user bin in your path, or just delete the old Hashdeep executables in user bin and make symbolic links to the new executable files in user local bin. You may also be wondering about that hash dash r command after the Hashdeep was built. This hash command is part of the bash shell and has nothing to do with the cryptographic hashing. It clears the command hash table for your current bash shell so the new Hashdeep files will be found. If you don't run it, you'll need to start a new shell before the new Hashdeep tools are found in your path. Occasionally check the version of Hashdeep at GitHub so you know when to follow these instructions again to update the Hashdeep tools. In this demo of the Hashdeep tools, we will cover how to find help in Linux for using Hashdeep, using Hashdeep to create hashes, and test if a file has changed. I'll also show you how to block hash a file, create a hash set, and how to audit entire directory trees of files looking for matches in a hash set. I will be using Hashdeep for most of this demo. In this demo we covered the Hashdeep tools, which are a set of professional grade forensic hashing tools that run on both Windows and Linux. The Hashdeep... First off, the H flag shows the command line usage of the more commonly used features of Hashdeep. The HH flag shows command line help for all of Hashdeep's features, including many minor features that I leave for your own exploration. The Hashdeep manual page has the full information that you will need for the Hashdeep tool. Note that the other Hashdeep tools have their own manual page. 
Hashkeep generates hash values using the MD5 and SHA-256 algorithms by default. The output format is a bit difficult to read because it is designed for Hashdeep to parse and use as a hash set file. The first line in the header is the version of Hashdeep output format, not the version of Hashdeep that created the output. The next line defines the hash record format as a comma-separated value with fields containing the input file size, its MD5 and SHA-256 hashes, and file name. The third line is the current working directory when the hashdeep command was run. The last line of the header is the actual hashdeep command line used to generate this output, a very handy feature for your forensic documentation. You can modify hashdeep output a bit using several command line flags. Use the B flag if you don't want the full path of the file that was hashed stored in each hash record. The S flag suppresses all error messages that the hashdeep tool might display. To change which hashing algorithms are used by Hashdeep, use the C flag with the name of each algorithm you want to use separated by commas. I know, it's hard to read, but with some practice you'll be able to eyeball the commas that separate the hash values. Now this is an unusual command line, but it shows that the Hashdeep supports the hashing of zero length input. Notice in the output the file size is zero and the file name is standard input. If you hash from a file stream, there is no file name to read. This is probably not something you will be doing very often in your forensics lab. And, of course, Hashdeep can hash multiple files using wildcards. Notice in the header that the wildcard is expanded to the full path and name of each file hashed. Block hashing files is performed using the P flag. The P flag takes the block size to hash as its argument. The block size must be specified in decimal notation. Each block hash is displayed as a separate record, with the actual size in bytes and the byte offset of each block shown. Unfortunately, none of the Hashdeep tools can hash selective areas of a file using byte offset values. The R flag allows the Hashdeep tools to recurse in down into subdirectories looking for files to hash. Passing a directory path to Hashdeep with the R flag will hash all of the files in that directory and all of the subdirectories beneath. Directory tree recursion is very handy for creating hash sets. All of the Hashdeep tools are capable of reading their own output as hash sets. Creating a hash set is performed by redirecting a Hashdeep tool's output to a file. In this example, we see that the contents of the hash set file is exactly the output of the MD5Deep tool. All of the Hashdeep tools can read hash sets in the formats produced by the SUM tools, HashKeeper, iLook, and the NIST National Software Reference Library. Oh, and their own output format as well. Now that we have our hash set, we can use it to identify files that are present or files that are missing. Matching mode is used to identify files that are listed in a hash set. Here we see the files that matched. But we also see a lot of system error messages too. Remember that the S flag gets rid of those. Now we can clearly see all of the files in the hash set that are present in the target directory given. If we were to specify a target directory where none of these files are present, we would see nothing displayed because there would be no positive matches. For situations where we care about which files are not there, use the X flag for negative matching. The output of the X flag is all of the files in the target directory that do not match the files in the hash set. Note that you can use either the M flag for positive matching or the X flag for negative matching, but not both on the same command line. If you want to match against multiple hash set files, you can specify multiple M or X flags, each with a different hash set file name. Forensic auditing using a hash set is an operation that can only be performed by the Hashdeep tool. Auditing is specifically used to check a set of files against a hash set to determine if anything changed and exactly what changed. Auditing is very handy for discovering if files have unexpectedly changed, possibly because of a malware infection, or if you want to know what files change during normal system operations, such as during update patching. To see an example of auditing, we will first have to create a new hash set using the recursive flag. Now we will run an audit on the directory tree we just created the hash set from. The A flag runs hashdeep in audit mode, and the K flag specifies the hash set file to audit against. The audit passed message indicates all files in the hash set are present and unchanged in the target directory. 
The K flag may be used multiple times to specify additional hash set files. Hashdeep always uses the K flag to specify the hash set file rather than the M or the X flags used by the other Hashdeep tools. If we were to add a new file to the target directory and rerun the audit, We now see that the audit failed. But we don't know why it failed. To get a more verbose audit report, include the V flag. We see here five files were found and matched, and the new one, one file is present that is not in the hash set. If we were to remove a file from the target directory and rerun the audit, we now see that only four files in the hash set matched. One file is not present in the hash set, and one known file listed in the hash set is now missing. All of this seems pretty much common sense. However, if we were to rename a file in the same location, it should appear that a second file is now missing and a new file has appeared, right? Instead of the audit is showing two new files and two missing files. It shows that one file has been moved, which is the Linux way of saying renamed. Hashdeep is smart enough not only to check if hashes in the hash set are present, but also if the names still match their hashes. In this case, Hashdeep has realized that a known hash now has a different file name than what is specified in the hash set file. If we wanted more information about an audit, we can specify the VV flag for very verbose. Now we see a report of more information about how the audit was conducted. And yes, there is a very, very verbose VVV flag which displays a report on the disposition of all the files listed in the hash set. In this demo we covered the Hashdeep tools, which are a set of professional grade forensic hashing tools that run on both Windows and Linux. The Hashdeep tools support MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, Tiger, and Whirlpool cryptographic hashing algorithms, create and use their own hash sets, recursively look for files and subdirectories, provide positive matching to identify files that are found, and negative matching to identify files that are not found. The Hashdeep tool itself supports an audit mode that compares the state of a set of files to a hash set file and reports on any differences. The Hashdeep tools also have many other smaller features which we did not cover, but are worth learning.